Got the 600 gallon vivarium here. One of my favorite setups in the room, but unfortunately, not all is well with it right now. This is definitely something I didn't think I'd have to do, but unfortunately, I don't really have any other options. Obviously, you could tell by the title of the video, this thing's leaking. Now, I noticed that two or three days ago, water was sort of pulling in the front here. At first, I thought maybe I accidentally sprayed some water on the floor when I was taking care of it, but I looked underneath and I saw that it was leaking along the back edge. Now, if you remember from the build and any other time I've done plywood enclosures, they always leak from the seams. It's never from the flat pieces. It's always in the seams. That is if they're going to leak. I would have addressed it sooner, but I didn't have the materials to do so. I got them now, though, so I can get to it. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to take everything out of the bottom here. Now, it's going to be annoying, but I guess it's good that this didn't happen two or three years from now, whenever everything would be a lot more established. Even a few months after construction here, everything is still kind of getting acclimated to the environment, so I guess in a way it's not really that big of a deal, it's just more of an annoyance. I'll talk more about this as I go. For now, I'm going to get in here and start taking everything out. I get this all cleaned out and dried off, which means I can apply the epoxy. And I gotta say, it was quite the process. I was cringing the whole time, and I'll talk a little bit about that here shortly, but I gotta get this resealed. If you see right there, most likely that's where it's leaking from. It's slightly indented, and the, it's not soft. It's not like the wood's decomposed or anything like that. I just think that for whatever reason, as everything settled in here, maybe the, the seal in that area kind of split a little bit. This is leaking through so I got to cut some of the background off so I can put the epoxy up a little bit higher and I get this thing sealed up. As I'm doing this I'm simply scoring the foam and snapping it. I didn't want to cut into the tank itself. Then I went on to apply the first coat of epoxy. I took my time with this making sure to get into all of the cracks and crevices. I'm really not trying to have this thing leak again. I let it cure for about 12 hours and applied the second coat. I let it cure for around 48 hours, and here it is now. I definitely overdid it a little bit, but you know what? I'm not trying to have it leak again, and I think this is going to do the trick. Now, throughout that process, after the 24-hour mark, I'd periodically spray the plants to make sure they didn't dry out. And luckily, it seems like everything made it through just fine. I really want to put everything back, but I got to do a proper water test first. I'm going to fill it up about 2 to 3 inches, which is higher than it would normally be, but again, we might as well overdo it. It's been about 12 hours and no leaks whatsoever. I'd say that we're good to go, so I went and vacuumed out all of the water and debris, which means I'm good to put this thing back together. As I'm sure you could imagine, it was the same thing as the initial build. I covered the drain hole with geotextile fabric and added the leaka. I covered all of that with more geotextile to keep debris out of the false bottom. I also sprayed around the hardscape and seam with foam. I let that cure overnight. Then I went on to add the substrate, plants, leaf litter, and other components. And here it is a week later. No leaks or anything like that, which means everything's good. Now it's been about five months since I've had this set up, and overall I'd say it's doing quite well, despite the fact that it doesn't look quite as full as it did whenever I first set it up. More on that in a little bit. One of the things I noticed as I was taking this apart is that down on the lower layers of this, there's so much life going on. You'll recall that whenever I set this up, I stocked it with various isopods and springtails, which is exactly what made me cringe as I was taking this apart. You figure every time I grabbed a handful of leaf litter or substrate, it was teeming with life, and I really didn't want to disrupt the balance of everything, but I didn't have a choice. It's pretty obvious just by taking a close inspection that the springtails weren't affected whatsoever. It's the isopods I was more so concerned about. I know there's still a population in here because I've seen them scurrying around, but they don't seem to be quite as prolific as before. As I said, I really tried to preserve everything, but with the nature of what went on, obviously there would be some loss in the process. And that of course goes for all of the plants down on the bottom as well. Unfortunately, I lost a few during the process, but I was able to keep everything in the canopy alive and well as I resealed this. And I've got a lot of awesome things to share with you up in this area, so let's take a closer look. One of the first things I want to show you is this little fungus back here. Now, it's really intriguing and neat to me, and one of the things I really enjoy about it is that it's more of a long-term type of fungus. Typically, when a mushroom or something like that pops up in the tank, it'll show up for a few hours and wither away. These are totally different. Another detail that I find really intriguing are these awesome anchoring roots on the vining plants. They're most prominent on the Monstera densini. I think they just have a really cool look to them and I can't wait till there's more of them. 
As I'm sure you could guess, I love to see that the moss is taken off in a few areas. Now it didn't establish everywhere and that's to be expected. As long as it starts in a few areas, it will eventually creep throughout the entire setup. The same could be said for the bromeliads. Unfortunately a lot of the ones I planted just didn't take, but the ones that did are doing really well. Like this tiger cub. It has a little pup on it which is a good sign. A lot of the others have these as well. The last thing I want to talk about up here are the ferns. Now ferns are kind of weird in that whenever you plant them in a completely new environment, a lot of times they'll drop all of the foliage. 9 times out of 10 the plant is completely fine, it just has to get acclimated to its new environment. Luckily that's already occurred in this one, and everything that you're seeing is new acclimated growth. It's going to be a while before they've really filled in, but I can be patient. Now that you have a better grasp of how this vivarium is doing, I'm going to add some new plants, and I have some serious heavy hitters here. I'm probably most excited about this one here, a batwing passion flower. Now this is an absolutely beautiful plant. If you look at the leaf shape here, it's probably pretty obvious how it gets its name. But if you look at all the different colorations and stuff in the leaf itself, it's incredibly beautiful. It also grows some spectacular flowers. This one has a lot of buds on it right now, which are closed up at the moment. But if they open in the meantime, I'll get some footage or pictures of that. I believe this is going to do exceptionally well in the vivarium, and I know exactly where I'm going to put it. The only catch is that I'm going to have to keep a close eye on it and make sure to periodically trim it. If left unattended, this could dominate the setup and choke out a lot of the other plants. I've also got a pretty large Oncidium orchid. It's a little rough around the edges, but that's alright. Given some time in the vivarium, it will look as good as the one that's in there now. I planted this like the one from before. I mixed up some orchid bark and sphagnum moss around the roots. I secured it in place with stainless steel wire. After that I was able to nestle it on the left side. I couldn't add more plants without some bromeliads since a few of them didn't make it. I secured most of these to the background by sticking the stolen into the foam. Others I could simply wedge into the hardscape. In addition to those I got some bilbergia. These are great because they're thinner so they'll add some nice texture and they'll also add a cool pop of color. I actually pulled these from the mother plant which is absolutely massive. I included these like the previous set. For the lower layers of the canopy I have these massive cryptanthus. They can grow in a variety of conditions including low light environments. Their colors likely won't be as nice though. Beside the details, I think I got most of the canopy looking good. I've got some more plants here for the understory though, including Syngonium podophyllum and a snake plant. I primarily added these to the background since they'll readily grow in dimly lit areas. I planted a few Fetonias down in this area as well. At this point, I felt that it was far enough along to add my favorite part, the details. First, I topped off the forest floor with fresh leaf litter. They're always really bright initially, but before long they'll blend into everything else. I'll also beef up the selection of air plants for more texture. Like always I just super glued them to the hardscape. I was super excited to get some Peperomia prostrata or string of turtles. They don't like to stay wet long after being watered, so they'll do best directly under the circulation fans. For even more texture, I'll include Slaginella uncinata. Aside from a few minor details that I'll address off camera, I think this is looking much better than before. I'll give it a proper spray down and then we'll circle back on a few things. That's the progress of this tank and the journey thus far. Other than a couple of plants dying off during the acclimation process, it's been really easy and fun to take care of. That said, you can't go into a build like this, or really any, with the unrealistic expectation that every single plant is going to thrive and take off. 
Even though I've used the majority of these plants in similar setups before with success, you never know what to expect. Things are always different from tank to tank, so you gotta take things as they come. And I don't know about you, but for me that's part of the fun. I love getting in here and dialing things in and tinkering them to get as close to perfection as possible. Now it's never actually gonna be a thing, but it's something that we could strive for at least. Of course I enjoyed this when I first set it up, but I like how it looks even better now, and I can't wait to see how it looks as it progresses and as I adjust things. I think this serves as a perfect example that things don't always go how you plan them to, and you kind of got to just roll with the punches. Obviously, I didn't intend for it to leak, it wasn't something that I enjoyed or wanted to happen, but I had to get in there and fix it, and I think this time around it should be good because I built up at least an eighth of an inch thick layer of epoxy. I really overdid it on this one, but I'm not trying to have it leak again, so I wanted to do it right the second time around and not have any issues moving forward. Anyway, this all would have been made much worse if I had this stocked already. It's one of the reasons why I like to wait, especially on these larger setups. I can get in there and fix any problems that may arise, like that leak, and fine tune things without stressing out the animal. Then I can add them with confidence and let them enjoy their setup in peace. If this continues on a positive trajectory from here on out, I'll most likely stock it around the 7-9 to nine month mark, give or take. I can't wait for that because it's going to be the icing on the cake. Or well, maybe I should say the moss on the rock because I don't really like icing that much. Anyway, that's all I have for you in this one, Serpa Squad. If you enjoyed the video, hit it with a thumbs up. Let me know what you think about everything down in the comments. And until next time, take care and peace.